beautiful, large, colorful blooms with intricate patterning and intoxicatingly fragrant when the sun hits them. Welcome to Avanda General Care Care Collab. We have so many participating on this Care Collab and I appreciate everybody that got back to me and everybody's videos will be linked in my description below. This is not something to be digested in one day, <laughs> but it makes for wonderful binge watching material should you find yourself in need of additional information regarding Vanda General Care. And seeing as I only have two Vandas left, I'm going to go about this in a way that I want my video to shed some light on the responsibility of growing this gorgeous, gorgeous genus of orchids. Every orchid that we grow, we do take certain responsibility for it. When it comes to Vandas, we are talking a different animal. And my video hopefully will shed light on what to expect, what to be prepared for, and where possible have a plan B in place so that nothing happens to your ambitious Vanda growing intentions as they happened in my case. This genus is a joy to grow when in climates with high humidity and temperatures from 20 degrees plus and as hot as the mercury would rise. To give you a feel for what they like, how their climate should be, if the atmosphere feels hot and soupy and you don't feel as though you can dry yourself off after a shower because of the high humidity, then you have the perfect conditions for large vandas. That would equate to about 80 to 95% of humidity Add to that the occasional flash thunderstorm and you have the perfect climate. Your growing experience is just going to be incredible. Here's the catch though. You can see I only have two large-ish bandas. My Banda Denisoniana on the left, she is considered large XL size. And on the right is my Banda Leopard Yawn, would be considered medium to large. These are what I have left of my Vanda collection and I grow them here in southern Spain and totally miscalculated what great care does to these orchids and how the challenges increase as they grow bigger and bigger. So that'll be the gist of my care video because if I can create some awareness of what to expect in the years to come, to avoid the stress and heartache of losing your now small Vandas that have yet to mature, by pointing a few things out, I hope to equip you ahead of time so that your outcome will not come close to mine and you can keep your vandas for decades. First of all, if you're dealing with seedlings, know that they will not stay seedlings. Clearly, they may grow slower at first, but after a year of acclimating, you can expect 15 centimeters of growth per year as a minimum. Some species grow slower, some faster. Even some hybrids, based on their parentage, will grow slower. Whereas my Vanda Donosoniana, she is just 15 to 20 centimeters per year is what she grows as a species, which is quite incredible. She grows faster than the hybrid Vanda Leopard Yawn. Secondly, I know this sounds like an obvious thing, it's a duh, but the care demands will increase as they grow in size. The humidity levels, if not adequate, will quickly show a start-stop effect when new roots grow. That will be your indicator if you have the humidity to back up the growing habit of these orchids. It can be counteracted by increasing the misting of the roots. That will be necessary just to stop the root tips from not progressing and developing further. And thirdly, of course, as the vanda grows, fertilizer levels will need to be increased, but without adequate humidity to buffer against the drying out of the velamen, root burn can occur. We can counteract that by lowering the fertilizer levels. That is an alternative, but we can also fertilize more frequently based on the size of the orchid. Or use the right fertilizer level as per usual and do the fertilizer applications very early in the morning while the heat is not as intense, which would also be necessary at night, maybe with just some plain water. Once again, I'm referring to inadequate humidity because as I mentioned in the beginning, if the humidity levels are high, 80 to 95%, everything when it comes to your van der growing experience is just a dream. Moving on, my fourth point that I need to point out to you and really hone in on this one is the space issue. Now, whether you're growing indoors or outdoors, these guys can get big. And if we take into consideration the 15 centimeter rapid growth rate per year, you can imagine how quickly a vanda will get big. 
Big is all relative based on space. But even if you've got your banda attached to a tree and you've got the ideal climate, just be aware that that banda will attach roots to the tree as well. And if something were to happen, you need to be prepared that it will get in the way of a branch and then you have to accommodate its growth pattern in and around that branch. So when it comes to whatever you're trying to do with your Vanda, or if you're planning ahead, think about its potential. Think positively, it will grow into beast mode and then do you have that space in four or five years to come? And I wanna point out that when I say big, I'm not just referring to their height. They get big in width as well, and then including their roots. So be prepared to accommodate them indoors during the months when temperatures drop, including their long roots. In some cases, growing them in baskets is all very good and fine. Right at the beginning, some kind of container, that will only help for so long. The roots will grow from the stem, they will branch on older roots, all contributing to what I mean when I say be prepared to accommodate their size indoors if you need to bring them in. We're always very, very cautious. We don't want to break roots and suddenly we have a vanda on our hands with very dangling, extending roots sticking straight out of the stem or going outside of the container that we had it in. And clearly there is more to the vanda than just the vegetation above. The next point I want to really point out is if you have the ideal conditions, the high humidity, without the adequate airflow, it can result in fungus finding its way onto the leaves. Airflow is super important when it comes to these orchids, especially in environments and climates with very high humidity. Without the airflow, the fungus will be a very, very happy camper on the orchid. Now that can easily be dealt with with a fungicide, but caution with the application of fungicide and the possibility of damaging the balanced function of the velamen. Caution with that. Too much or too many applications destroys the delicate balance of the velamen being able to absorb any form of water, causing the orchid to dehydrate and die. And I can say that with such conviction because after my copper debacle of 2021, I learned my lesson and despite years of successfully using copper fungicide, one mistake took out my other more volatile vandas because not every vanda is the same when it comes to how robust and resistant they are. So let's seg straight into the next part when it comes to maybe making a mistake on the fungus side. How good is your water supply? You must ensure long term that you have abundant water supply. If your humidity levels do not average at least 75% throughout the year and you have to provide the misting, the watering, or even you can submerge soak as a form of watering, but be prepared for the eventuality that you may experience issues with your water supply and clean water is important. Have a plan B in place for these eventualities. As these orchids grow, their need for water also increases. In my case, summer 2021, my RO system was not functioning at 100% capacity. Its efficiency had dropped to 30%. So for four months, the struggle was real. Add to that my heavy-handed copper treatment, not being able to water abundantly, and the two were a recipe for disaster. And as a consequence of that, I lost pandas. This is not meant to scare you, but this is to prepare you for years to come, what you are up against when you grow the Vandas well, what the requirements will be in the future. And the reason I'm saying this so adamantly in my video is because I thought everything was going to be fine here in southern Spain. I'm in a warm climate. I did not factor in that my humidity was so low. I never even considered my water supply would be a problem because I have an RO system. And thirdly, when these vendors arrived, I wasn't thinking that I was one day going to have to house 200 plus orchids indoors during the winter months. So once they grew to this size, there is no more room to hang them in 
or because of their dangly roots, I can't even put them on some form of a pedestal to accommodate them while it is cold outside. So let me tell you what brought me to the point of 2021 when I lost my Vandas and what I consider successful growing to get them to the size that I couldn't accommodate them anymore, not just because of my copper, but also because of lack of water supply. While my Vanda collection was complete and small, I was able to submerge them in an oversized tub that held 150 liters of RO water, which I had mixed with 300 parts per million of fertilizer, which based on evaporation would then be diluted throughout the course of the week with fresh RO water. And then once a week, I would change that Vanda tub and refresh and start again with 300 parts per million and little by little it would dilute towards the end of the week. My CalMag and seaweed applications would be part of their regime but I would use my sprayer at 100 parts per million of which 40 parts per million was seaweed and 60 parts per million was CalMag. The pH of my fertilizer in the tub as well as my supplement applications was always at 6.5 up to 6.5 eight seeing as they were bare root and the only media i have in their baskets was lava rock or in the two that i have left there's only lava rock in there the purpose of the lava rock initially was to allow for more humidity and water retention around the roots while the roots were contained in the basket also to weigh my baskets down because i have extremely hot dry winds that would be just dangerous for mechanical damage seeing as they would be blowing left right center and all over the place bumping up against each other as well as up against the wall so it served two purposes right at the beginning when these guys were small. Now we've come to this stage of their growth. It is only serving the purpose to weigh the baskets down because you can see the roots are all over the place. And the first three years, they thrived and grew into beast mode. In my climate, their light levels are high all year round. Yes, we have some dull days, we have some dull weeks, but now that the remaining ones are too big to bring inside, their light levels are pretty high. As you can see, I have a reflecting white facade. During the winter, everything is really lit up and they live on the west side of my patio. The reason I have them on my west side is because I have a little pocket of warmth here in the corner of my patio. The terracotta heats up, the facade lights up, and the direct winter sun is no detriment to burning their leaves. Plus, it adds a little bit more of a temperature increase in this little area. So if my ambient air is 18 degrees Celsius, this little corner can reach up to 21, 22 degrees Celsius, depending on how chilly the wind is. Sometimes I can stand in the shade and I've got 18 degrees. I stand here on my west side with the sun shining. I've got 24 degrees. So for the time being, in the winter, this is where they live, a little bit more protected because my night temperatures drop down to five degrees Celsius, usually around the nine degree mark. And clearly for warm to hot growing orchids, nine degrees is a little bit on the chilly side. In this little corner of my patio, I always hope to buffer away the chill a little bit and uh, somehow they have acclimated. Meanwhile, in the summer, I can't have them touch any direct sun here. So they are hanging under a covered south-facing portico where they will only have sun early morning from the east until such a time that for the rest of the day they are in permanent shade. Even though I have lost three Vandas, that was my care for my entire Vanda collection for the first three years. And everybody just exploded into growth, grew and bloomed. It was fabulous. And the challenges were really, really more obvious when it came to my lack of water supply because during the summer, I have to go around and mist and compensate for the lack of humidity in my air at least three times a day. So they would get a soap. It would be an hour or two hours, depending with whatever else I was doing and how busy I was. It would then be misting throughout the day just to give them a little bit of a respite from the hot, dry air, and then another misting late evening, and that every single day. And that is because I don't have humidity. I cannot stress it enough. If you want to grow Vanda successfully without the stress and the heartache and thinking, oh, they're just getting too much for me, make sure you have ample humidity, because if for one day you don't have time 
and it's really hot or life gets in the way. High humidity is your savior and it will make sure your vandas are tiding over pretty well until you can address them with more water. I mean, clearly where they live, they get a lot of torrential rain, including high humidity, but that's not always the case. Where they live, they've got two seasons, rainy season, and non-rainy season but during the non-rainy season the humidity is exponentially high and that is how they survive out in the wild these orchids really are not to be underestimated especially if the conditions are not 100 percent adequate and remember the space that they will take if you are growing them indoors or if you are bringing them indoors during the winter the roots just get longer and longer and longer and they will stick out of the structure as they grow from the main stem and not always can we manipulate them back into the basket or the container that we have. Keep that in mind when you purchase because the first three years it's going to be a breeze. As they get bigger that is when your real challenges will raise its head and then just be prepared for that. That's all I can say. Be prepared to see the success and fruits of your labor turn into a huge vanda and make sure you still have space and the right conditions and the ability to take care of what can turn into beast mode. <laughs> it's a different kind of animal. <laughs> Personally, I don't want to be without them. I hated losing the ones that I had, but there comes a time also in the orchid hobby that we have to understand our limitations and the only way we understand our limitations is when we get to the point of I've reached my limit here. It was not my intention to put anyone off with this video. I just wanted to shed some light on what to expect from these orchids because clearly isn't it the aim and the goal of every orchid grower to increase the size of our orchids to get them to bloom. Just know what you're up against when it comes to the care of the big vandas because when they respond to your care they will respond <laughs> and I just want you to be ready for when that happens. I really hope that this was helpful. Once again, thank you to every single channel that has participated. Really appreciate your time. And thank you to everybody that watched this video. I also appreciate your time very, very much. Let me know if you have any comments to add. I always embrace the dialogue in the comments. And of course, questions. Ask away. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, though, that you stay safe. I'd love to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.